It's time now for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news. This is the Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy Silverado, the official truck of the outdoors. Hey everybody, big news flash. Summer hit this week. Not big news to anyone. Even though the first official day of summer happened this week, we've been in the throes of our first heat wave of 2011 for about the past 30 days. Our weather has been abnormally hot, above normal, and our water surface temperatures are heating up quickly around the region. Normally that spells bad bass fishing. Bass do not like water temperatures when they get extremely hot. However, not to fear, the doctor is in today because in the next half hour, we'll be giving you at least three specific techniques that you can use over the next few weeks when these temperatures are this hot, where you can still go out, locate and successfully catch bass across our Southwest region. And while I'm out in the Nitro Z8 doing that on the water, we'll be taking you around the Southwest region for your very latest fishing reports from Oklahoma, Louisiana, Texas freshwater, and along the Texas and Louisiana Gulf Coast. Also this week on the Lawrence Hot Lake of the Week, I'll be showing you a specific South Texas lake where you can successfully employ these techniques to catch some bass of your very own in the next few weeks. We'll have your big fish photos on the big catch of the week, your Ask the Pro Expert answers, and the Academy Right Stuff where we'll be showing you the specific equipment you'll need to catch these bass. But right now we get the boat in the water and while I'm doing that, you go back to the FSN studios for your Chevy weekend planner. A check of the fishing tables for the weekend shows that it will be a good time to be on the water early and late in the day. Peak times will begin around sunrise and a little bit before sunset. The summer solstice was Tuesday, so our days are going to slowly start getting shorter. Expect sunrise to take place at 621, and the sun will be setting at 839. Evenings will feature a crescent moon that is 30% visible. We'll be right back with all the information you need for a successful fishing trip this weekend. Stay with us. The Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy, is brought to you by Chevy Silverado, the official truck of the outdoors. Buy quality award-winning tracker boats. Fish the finest. Lawrence, maker of the HDS High Definition System. And Academy, right stuff, low price, every day. He blew up on it right here early in the morning. Good jump. That's a decent fish to start it off with. All right, hey, welcome back everybody. This is your Southwest Outdoors report today. Man. And that is the way to get it going early on a summer morning. Hey, we're talking about how you can locate and catch largemouth bass in the hottest part of the summertime months. And here is the first of your three prescriptions for today. Go early and throw a topwater. A lot of times the largemouth bass overnight, when the water temperature drops off a few degrees in the dark, the bass will move up into shallow water and they'll actively feed and they'll stay that way until the sun gets up at a higher angle and those rays start penetrating deeper into the water. So right now, the sun is at a real low angle coming in across the water and subsurface, it's still fairly dark down there. The fish are less intimidated. They're still actively feeding and they will come up in shallow water and bite a top water like that one did. So we're gonna let that fish go back. I'll show you several top waters. That's a little torpedo type bait. I'll show you several of those at the end of the show in the Academy Right Stuff that you can use in these hot weather months. Get up early, be on the water at daylight, throw a top water until the sun gets up at a higher angle and starts penetrating deeper into the water. Now when that happens, you've got to go to prescription number two. We'll talk about that 
in a few minutes. But first up, here's your Oklahoma Fishing and Lake Report with Gary Dollahan. Okay, we have to talk bass fishing again this for Oklahoma because the reports are just too good coming in from all across the state. Large lakes, small lakes, the bass fishing is good, and they're really relating to points right now, which means it's gonna be a good starting place for you to go even if you're going to a body of water for the first time this season. Start out early in the morning throwing a Zara spook or a buzz bait, go to soft plastics and crane baits. When the sun gets higher, and concentrate on the four to six foot depths with those all the way out to the first break line, ideally about six to 10 foot of water. Also this time of year, when it does get hot in the middle of the day, use your cool down period, either riding in the boat or wading in the water to check out new areas that will hold fish when you know the water levels come back up. Pay special attention to transition zones, like where sand meets a patch of rock back to sand again. Those rock patches will hold a lot of fish in the springtime and again early in the fall. Also look for rocky points with lots of rock and cover that are under water at normal lake levels and again identify landmarks and in those sandy areas and mud flat banks pick out isolated rocks and boulders because those are like fish magnets when the water levels come back up and lots of shad get on those flats. Even an isolated stump can hold a lot of bass and a lot of crappie in the summertime in shallow water. One thing about it, you can't catch them if you don't go. Next up on the Lawrence Hot Lake of the Week, I'm going to show you a specific lake where you can go and employ some of these tactics we're talking about today to effectively catch largemouth bass right through the hot summertime months. It's Choke Canyon Reservoir south of San Antonio, Texas. So let's locate it right now on the Lawrence HDS-10 with the Insight shaded relief mapping option and we'll show you that choke canyon is located again south of san antonio and just west of three rivers texas and we're going to focus on the area around callahan state park on the south shore at mid lake next we switch to the navionics hot maps platinum chart for all the submerged goodies where the bass live we focus on that same callahan state park area there are countless places around here that will hold bass there are, first of all, lots of submerged road beds. The bass will move and feed along some of these. Next, there are some submerged pond dams from before the lake was filled. Bass will travel along and up and down the sides of these. And there are some scattered grass beds along the shoreline. The depth of those will vary depending on the water level. And at last check, choke was about eight feet low so some of these may be on dry ground. These are the types of areas that the bass will migrate to when the weather gets really hot and you can catch them at Choke Canyon all summer long. And there are some big ones that are caught there every summer. That's this week's Lowrance Hot Lake of the Week. Stay with us. When we come back, Cajun Phil and Kevin are next up with your Cajun Bites from Louisiana. The Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy, is brought to you by Strin, the standard of dependability by Gene LaRue Lures and Bobby Garland Baits. Quality soft plastic baits made in Oklahoma with American pride. Chevy Silverado, the official truck of the outdoors and Mercury Marine. There's a bass biting my plastic worm. Watch, watch this. Eat it, eat it, eat it. He's got it. Got it. All right. Ooh, that's a fatty right there. Don't drop your rod in the water, Barry. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Southwest Outdoors report today talking about how you can catch bass in the hottest part of the summertime months. And here is your next written prescription. Fish tight to cover. Now, that fish, in fact, we can show you right here, came out of this big cedar brush top that's laying right over in the water. And it is a perfect bassy looking spot. We've got several other areas. You can see right here behind me, there's a, a big bush laying out right off this creek channel and another one hanging off the bank right here. Several likely looking spots. But the key here is that you've got to be willing to throw right up in the cover. In fact, a lot of times you've got to pitch and flip underhanded and drop that bait straight down in the middle of a treetop or a bush top 
or right in the thickest part of a grass bed in order to get one of these fish to bite. Once that sun gets off the horizon and the rays start penetrating straight down in the water, these bass will move tight to cover. That's where you've got to catch them, just like that one bit right there on a plastic worm. I'll show that to you a little later as well. Let's check in right now with Cajun Phil and Kevin in Louisiana with your Cajun bites. Hi friends, Cajun Phil here with your Fox Louisiana Fishery Report. I tell you what, finally talked to a couple of anglers that's got this heat problem solved. They've been fishing at night. That's right, I got a couple of my friends been going to Toledo Bend, they're fishing at night. Oddly enough though, they're both doing something different. One of them's throwing nothing but spinner baits and he's fishing shallow waters. He's going around boat docks. He's catching lots. He's catching lots of numbers. The other guy, he's fishing puffs and ridges, deeper water, and he's catching bigger fish, but not as many. He's a cage, and I tell you what's happening is, he said the fish are moving up on these humps and ridges two or three times a night. Other than that, you're just chunking and chunking. He's also found a brush top on the top of that little ridge. He said now every time he reaches that brush top and finds it, for shaking that plastic worm, bam. Big old bass, he's catching four to six pounds, and he's catching about 10 to 12 a night. So about half as many as the guy with the spinnerbait. So try spinnerbaiting or worming at night, and I'll tell you what, you can beat the heat. And I'll tell you what, with July 4th weekend right around the corner, not that far from here, we need to start talking about boat safety, because I'll tell you what, there was another accident in Hopedale this week, and yes, there was a fatality. A 66-year-old man and the other pastor in his boat is in critical condition They had a collision. Be careful, wear your life jackets, wear your kill switches, and watch out for the other boats. We want you back home safe. Until next time, it's no Cajun Phil for Captain Kevin saying, happy fishing, and may God bless you. We're going to see you next week. He's got it. Crappie. Golly, look at the size of that dude. Wow. All right, well, there's a bonus, as I mentioned. Everything goes tight to cover, and you can also catch crappie in the summertime tight to cover. Look at the size of that big boy right there. That's a good one. All right, we're going to let him go back, take a quick break. Hey, we've got more fishing reports, lots more information coming about hot summertime fishing. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy, is brought to you by Abu Garcia for life. By Navionics. Enjoy Navionics anytime, anywhere. By Whataburger. Just like you like it. And by Motor Guide Trolling Motors. Straight down. Got it. What have I got? Whoa. Pretty decent fish. Come here, baby. That's a pretty good fish. Boy, what a pull. Look at him pull my rod tip down in the water. I'm gonna come right down here and lip him. Okay. Open your mouth, baby. There we go. That little dude right there. Let me get the trolling motor before I, before the wind carries me back too far. Hey, welcome back everybody. Your Southwest Outdoors report today. I finally got another bite. It's been about three hours since I've gotten any kind of a strike and that's what can happen on these hot summertime days. When this water temperature gets up around or over 90 degrees like it's already done in much of our region, these fish can just go into lockdown mode and you can't buy a bite. When that happens, Here's your third big tip of the day. You've got to go lighter, smaller, finesse tackle and go to deep water and some structure. So it all begins with jump into spinning rod, light line, 10 pound test, strand fluorocarbon is what I've got on here. Then you've got to go to either a small Texas rig or drop shot rig finesse bait. That is a little four inch or five inch maybe, Jean LaRue salt shaky head plastic worm small profile bait. Then you've got to move out in deeper water. You can see this big bluff behind me. The water falls off real deep, 15, 20 feet out here. That's the depth you need to be in. Then you need to find some kind of cover. Underwater tank dam, rock pile, road bed, hump, grass bed, something out in deeper water. Use that finesse tackle and a lot of times you can buy yourself a bite 
when you can't get one any other way. Here's Brian Hughes, your Texas freshwater fishing and lake report. Hi everybody and welcome to this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you by the ultimate summer boat and outdoor show. Now, it's the first official week of summer and it's all about school. The kids are getting out and the bass are getting in to school. I was on two different East Texas lakes this week, Athens and Lake Fork, and found schooling bass on both of those. Now this is not like the sand bass you see where they're all over the surface and they're easy to find. You need to pay close attention. Only one or two of these fish will actually hit the surface, but below that are hundreds and hundreds of largemouth bass of all sizes. Now you can use the Hedden Zara Spook or one of my favorites, the Tiny Torpedo in clear. You can also use spoons, spinner baits, traps, and really just about any of the soft plastic jerk baits that fit your fancy. Colors are not nearly as important as you may think, just stay with something natural and shad-like. That'll work on these schooling bass on both of these lakes. It's really hot, you may want to think about nighttime fishing as well. Take your black spinnerbait out there and see if that won't catch you some bass. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes, brought to you by the ultimate summer boat and outdoor show. Let's check in with Mr. Bill Olson, he's on the coast. Hi folks, Texas Outdoors Journal brings you this week's report for the very best monthly coastal and inland fishing information, plus year-round hunting tips, check out our award-winning magazine. Pick up a copy of Texas Outdoors Journal on newsstands or subscribe securely at the website on the screen. Well, winds have continued to be a constant menace during early summer, just as they were through the spring. Those winds have muddied waters, made fishing open bay reefs, or working birds unsafe and kept the surf roiled. It looks like this weekend winds will moderate somewhat, but still keep things stirred up. The good news is that when the winds have laid or been light, fishing has been off the chart. The best option when the wind blows is to continue to rattle fish up. Anglers using an Alameda rattling float or Mahler type float with either live bait or a soft plastic below have continued to catch fish. Besides the back lakes and protected shorelines, anglers fishing the intercoastal waterways have caught fish. It's another excellent place to beat the wind and still find fish. On the upper coast, portions of Sabine Lake and from Chocolate Bay to Freeport have some good stretches of protected intercoastal water that also connect to back coves, lakes, and bays. The same is true around Mesquite and Ayers Bay along the middle coast. Plus, don't forget that stretch of water known as the land cut south of Baffin Bay. This weekend, Saturday has a double tide schedule of two high and two low tides. This Sunday has a single tide schedule of one high and one low. I'm Bill Olson, and I'll see you on the coast. The Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy, is brought to you by Academy. Right stuff, low price, every day. Nitro Performance Bass Boats. Fish your best in a nitro. Coast at Del Mar Sunglasses. See what's out there. And by Chevy Silverado, the official truck of the outdoors. Welcome back, everyone. It's time now for our Ask the Pro feature. Our question this week comes to us from Slade in Waco, who wants to know, when should you use a bait that makes noise? For the answer, let's ask Bassmaster Elite Angler Tommy Biffle of Oklahoma for the answer. I believe you need to use a bait that makes noise basically about all the time because all my jigs have rattle in them. I use a triple rattleback jig. Uh, I designed my Biffle Bug with a chamber in it so I can put a rattle in it. So I'm, I'm pretty much a noise type guy. I like, I like the baits that rattle and make a lot of noise. If you have a question for one of the pros, just visit our website at southwestoutdoorsreport.com. Click on the Ask the Pro link and send us your information. Now let's get you back to Barry for our Whataburger Big Catch of the Week. Congratulations to this week's Big Catch of the Week winner. He is John Hash of Shawnee, Oklahoma. Showing a picture here of his 34 pound blue catfish he caught out of one of the best blue cat lakes in our region, Lake Texoma. If you'd like to enter the contest, go to our website at southwestoutdoorsreport.com. Top right hand corner of the front page is everything you'll need to register to become a member. It's free and once you're a member of the fan club, you'll have access to 
the members only area that includes my weekly blog, my favorites page, the ask the pro questions, and the place to submit your big catch of the week photo and it just might be seen here on our show. Next up, it's time for the Academy Right Stuff. We'll show you the lures that you'll need to employ these hot weather techniques that we taught you on today's show. It all begins on your far left with a torpedo type bait. It's got a propeller on it that churns up water as you pull it. Next is a dog walking spook type bait. You fish it on a rhythmic cadence. Next is a popper or a chugger type bait. It spits water out in front of the nose. Then we've got the plastic baits. This one is the eight inch ribbon tail worm by the Jean LaRue Lure Company. And next to that is the little salt head shaky worm that we used on the finesse technique. In my 30 years of serious bass fishing, I've used these techniques to catch lots of good quality bass right through the hottest summertime months. I think if you'll try these, you'll be successful on your favorite lake. Good luck out there this weekend. Hey, by the way, our show airs next Thursday night at 1030 or right after the Texas Rangers or Houston Astros post game shows if either of those games runs late past 10 p.m. You can also catch our show each and every week on our website. The past week's episode is up 24-7 right on the front page and you can see all of our archived past episodes for the entire season at our YouTube channel at youtube.com. And finally, you can get lots of content that you don't see on the television show on our Facebook page. Search on Facebook for Southwest Outdoors Report with Barry Stokes. You'll get everything and be sure to click on the live link. Have fun out there this weekend. We'll see you next week. Until then, I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.